Hey guys, it's Love Saloon here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create my new Fluffed Days bracelet. This is my own original design that I actually started when I came up with my Royal Days bracelet, but I didn't finish this one at that time, so now I came back to it. Um, this one here I did like flatten it out some, and this one I kept the middle a little more raised, so you can definitely wear it either way. Um, and it is reversible. Let me show you the back side, which I love. I think it looks super cool in the back. So it has like the swirly look on the sides and not quite sure what the turquoise bands are doing, but I think it looks cool all together. So hopefully you guys like it too. Um, it does only take about 155 bands if you use eight bar pins. Um, just a little side note, for most of our sizes, this design may require 12 bar pins um, because the eight that I used was still too small. So, yeah. Um, but it does require just the four wide, but then it's gonna be really small if that's all you use. So anyway, if there's a little bit of an echo in this introduction, I do apologize. I had to refilm it because I accidentally deleted the original one. So anyway, uh, without rambling on any longer, let's go ahead and get started. To make this bracelet, you will need to have at least four bar pins, but like I mentioned before, you will most likely need to have uh, 12 bar pins for a full wrap. Um, I did make these with eight bar pins, and it's too small, so keep that in mind when you're making it. For the tutorial, I am just going to use eight, so four wide, and then another set of four. Okay, so make sure your middle bar pins are aligned and then your two outer ones should be coming inwards. So once you have that set up, you also need your hook and one C-clip. We're gonna start by laying the border bands, which are these brown burgundy ones. I'm gonna use my opaque gray. So we'll start by just laying one here in the center. And if you do like to have a thicker close, you can certainly add two here. Um, so typically we would then go out to the sides, but we're not going to do that for this design. So we're not going to lay one here. We're actually going to come to the sides and we're just going to start like this, laying it forward. So make sure you don't have anything there. And then we'll just go up the perimeter, or the sides for the perimeter. I'm going to kind of toggle between both sides. Try to get it done. At any time, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause until you catch up, which I'm not moving very fast right now. <laughs> Since I am only doing the two sets, I will be going all the way down to the end. And just so you know, I am actually trying to figure out how to do this design with a, a transfer. So I'm trying to figure it out. I think I almost have it down. So if I do figure out how to do it with a transfer, I will do another tutorial for those of you who do not have more than the four bar pins. So that will be exciting. So once you reach the 24th pin, you're down to the one before the last. We're just going to be bringing it in like that. All right. So then we will come back to the beginning. And now we're going to lay some middle X's. So the middle X's is what is white on this one here. Upside down. The middle ones. And I'm going to use black for that. So we'll just start on the bottom left pin and we're going to cross it diagonally 
up to the right side and then we'll start on the bottom right and cross it to the left. And we'll do that again. So we'll start on the bottom left, cross it up to the right, and then bottom right, we'll cross it up to the left. And you want to make sure you keep starting on the left pin first and then crossing it. It does make a difference with how it comes out in the end if you don't do it that way. Just keep laying our X's until you reach the end. And we do go to the very end with the X's. So it should touch the very last pin at the end. If I'm moving too slow for you, you can certainly fast forward it also. Because I do feel like I'm moving slow tonight. So it should be like that. And now you would definitely want to push down these middle X's because we're going to have to lay some bands on top of these middle ones. So just push them down really quick. And now we are going to lay a single chain on both of these two center rows here. So that is going to be what is turquoise in here. And I'm going to use my neon green. So this is very basic. You're just going to start on the bottom pin and go forward. One after the other. And then, like I said, we have to do the left middle one also. So it'll be the same thing. So I'm actually going to go off camera to do this side. And if you are not caught up, hit that pause button and we'll meet back up here in just a moment. Alrighty, so this is what it should look like now once you're completed. So I would definitely take a moment and push everything down, especially these side ones here. And then once you have pushed all of those down, we're going to turn our loom around. So the arrows are now facing us. And we are going to add a cap band onto the bottom pin here. So we want the cap band to stretch across both of them. But I put it on one of them. So you're just going to wrap it like so. And then I use my hook and I grab that whole cap band and stretch it to the other pin like that and now we can go ahead and start looping so what we're going to be doing first is looping all of the top layer that we just laid the single chains here we're going to be pulling each one of those just out like that so it'll be going like kind of diagonally up some 
So I'll start on the right one here, grab the top band, and we're going to just take it up and connect it up diagonally to the right side like that. And we'll do the same thing to the left side. Grab the top band, bring it diagonally up to this left one. So it's kind of coming like straight out. We'll come up to the very next one. Go inside there, grab that top band, stretch that up to the next one here. Do the same on the left side. That one comes up to the left. Come up to the next one, do the same thing, bringing it up to the right. And the left one comes up to the left. It's very easy. The only thing you want to make sure of is if you start moving fast, you want to make sure that you don't pop this uh, part of the band off like this when you're pulling it up. So just be careful when you're taking it off that you don't do that. So this is what it's looking like just to give you a better view. So I'm just going to go ahead along and keep doing it because it's pretty simple. You can certainly just do the right side and then come back and do the left. It's up to you. It's probably quicker. I'll go ahead and just do the right side because it is a little quicker if you just do one side first. And I'm at the top on this one, it's the last one, like that. So that's what the right side's looking like. And now I'm going to finish off my left side. This is the set I usually end up popping off by accident when I'm rushing. So just to save on some time, I'm going to get the left side looped really quick and then I'll come back in a moment. So this is what it should now be looking like. So I did take a moment and push my bands down. And now we're going to come back to the beginning. What we're going to be doing, starting on the second pinup, we're going to be grabbing the top most part of the band um, of each border band. And we're going to be stretching it diagonally in. And we're basically just like rearranging the band, not so much as looping it. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start on this left side. And with my hook facing like this, I'm going to go inside on the second pin here. I'm going to go inside this loop that we created. I'm going to grab the top part of the band like this. I'm going to take it off of the pin. And then I'm going to stretch it backwards and connect it diagonally to that one right there. So if you look closely, that band is completely straight. We don't want any loop in that or any twist. So then we'll come up to the next one. Grab the topmost band. Just stretch it back and attach it there. We're going to do that to each one. So make sure you're going inside that little loop that we created. 
and pull that top band diagonally in. Like so. So it is rather easy. Lay this down. So like I said, it's kind of like we're just rearranging the bands a little bit. I guess gray wasn't the best color to choose because it's not very bold, is it? <laughs> so even the top one you do as well. The very last one up here, you do the same way. So that's what it's looking like. And then we have to do the same thing on the right side. You want to go in the pin. I grab that top end and I kind of like pull it forward and then in to the left and attach. So just make sure it's straight like that. Come up to the next one. Go inside that loop we made. I'm going to grab the band from right here and carefully remove it from the pin. And attach. Grabbing it from in here. Removing it forward and then bringing it back. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this side done really quick. If you're not understanding what I'm doing, you can certainly watch the previous instructions. And I'll be right back in just a moment. Alrighty, so this is what it should look like now. That we have all of those transferred over. So now we're going to actually loop the middle. The middle X's. So this part's really easy. So we'll just start down here on the left bottom corner. We're going to grab the most top band, which is my black X, and we're going to cross it back to itself, which will come up to the right. And then we'll grab this bottom right one, grab the top band, and we're going to cross that one to the left. And we'll do that all over again. So we'll start on the left side. You're going to push back the top bands, grab the very bottom band, which should be your X band, Cross it diagonally up to the right here. Go into the right one, grab the bottom band. Cross it up to the left. And we're going to keep doing that. So you always want to start by going in the left pin, crossing it up to the right, and then you go in the bottom right one, cross it up to the left. So it does look a lot nicer if you try to keep your bands Nice and straight. But I would say this part is pretty simple. Pretty basic, I guess. Because you're just bringing them back to themselves.
My black bands always want to like twist. I hate that. Because I like using black. So I'm nearing the end here, so I'm just going to hurry up and get it finished. And then I'll meet you guys back here in just a moment to show you what to do next. Alrighty, so this is what it's looking like. So we're just going to come back to the beginning now. And the last thing we're going to do is our borders. So um, this part, you just pay attention because it's a little different than, than normal. So um, the first band's... We're going to go in, grab that band, and we're going to stretch it up, not to this pin here, but we're going to stretch it up to this pin, to the second pin. So going in the cap band, grab that band down here, and we're going to stretch it diagonally up to that second pin. Do the same on the right side. Stretch it up to that second pin, like so. So now, with all the rest of them, we are actually going to be skipping a pin and connecting it to the next pin. But we're not going to go around the outside. We're going to do it going on the inside. So I'll show you what I mean. So on this one here, I don't want to be in your way. Actually, I'm going to start on my right side so you can see a little better what I'm doing. So I'm going to push back the top two bands, or however many bands are there. <laughs> grab the bottom. And we're going to skip the next pin. And come inside. You don't want to be out here. You want to be inside. Skip the next pin. Stretch it up and connect it here. So it's connecting to that second one. Coming in. We'll come up to the next pin. Push back the band. Grab that very bottom. Take it off the pin. Skip the next pin. And go around it and connect it to the second one. Like so. Just make sure you're coming around that pin on the inside and not on the outside. So grab the bottom band, pull it around the second pin, or the, I'm sorry, pull it around the first pin and connect it to the second pin up here. Skip that first one, connect it up here to the second, and we'll do that all the way up. So there is a good amount of tension on these bands. So it's kind of like we did um, in the my Royal Dais bracelet if you made that. Except we're doing it on the inside instead of the outside of the pin. Make sure when you connect the band you're coming back a pin and grabbing that bottom band. Coming up, connecting it to the second pin, come back a pin, grab the bottom band, and do that again. Sometimes you may need to like use your finger so it doesn't keep popping over the band. Like, see how I hold it here? Or so it doesn't pop over the pin as I attach it like that.
Oh, and when you get up to the, oh, I didn't know it was in focus, sorry. Um, when you connect your last one, you're going to come back a pin. Grab this one here. And you're actually going to stretch this one up to this one here. Like so. After you do that, you're going to go in this top pin here. And you're going to grab, you're going to push back all the bands and grab whatever that bottom band is in there, which is my green one. And you're also going to bring that one in. And you have to do that to make sure that doesn't fall apart. So that's pretty important. So then we're going to do the same on this to the left side. So we'll start on the bottom left corner here. Push back, grab the bottom band. And remember we're going on the inside of the pin, skipping that first one. Connecting it up here to the second one. Come back a pin. Push back, grab your bottom band. Come in. Skip that first pin, connect to the second. Come back a pin, grab the bottom band. Go around that first pin and connect to the second. Once again, make sure you're going on the inside of the pins and not on the outside. Make sure you're always coming back a pin and grabbing that bottom. You don't want to miss any bands. So I'm just going to finish these last couple ones up and then I'll come back and show you what to do. So remember when you're at the top, this is the last one I went in and looped. So I looped, I connected this one up here to this one. So come back a pin and grab this second one here. And you're going to bring that up and diagonally to this very top center one like that. And then you have to come into this very top one and grab the bottom band. And you've got to bring that into the center as well. So don't forget to do that, it's very important. And then now we're just gonna go inside these top pins, pushing back everything to locate that very bottom band that we laid in the beginning, which is for our C-clip. So go on both sides, grab the bottom band, bring them together. And that's what we will attach our C-clip to. Now what I do is I hold on to it so my bands don't pop off and I pop off the top two pins because they are pretty tight up here and then I let it go. And now I come back down here and I start releasing them. It's not a very super tight design, but I like to use my hook to release it because it keeps the bracelet looking cleaner in the end. Less fixing that you have to do. So it just depends on your patience if you want to do it like this. I release my sides and then I come back and I release the middle. So it's up to you if you want to do that, but I will come back when I have it off of the loom and show you the finished bracelet. Okay, so I just took mine off the loom. I didn't want to mess with it at all. I want you to see what it looks like when I take it off of the loom. So what you're going to definitely need to do is give it a stretch like this. So just stretch it out so that everything can kind of fall into its place. Like so. 
And that pretty much cleans it up just by doing that. This is the back side. If you're going to wear it on the back side, I don't know why my focus is not focusing. Um, if you do not do anything, it's kind of like tucked in. So if you do want to wear it on this side, because I think it looks really cute, you might want to like bend it a little like this so that it just kind of pops onto this side. Like that. And then it kind of pops out on that side. So I really like this side of it too. Um, to close it, you're just going to come down here and you may have to pull, locate your cap band and pull on it because it's kind of tucked in there. And then you would just attach the two. I'm not going to do it because mine's small, but that is what you do. So there you have my completed fluffed dais bracelet. Again, this is my own original design created when I made my royal dais bracelet. Um, so if you guys like it, please hit the like button below. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, and if you do make this, please don't forget to tag me on Instagram. I'm loves to loom on there also. And I hope to see many of them. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you can also do that below. And you can stay up to date with any tutorials that I release. So thanks again for sticking around for another tutorial. And I'll see you soon at my next video. Thanks guys. Bye.